Yo, what's going on YouTube and welcome back to Goal Line Hockey. It's your boy Kevin Forte. Today we're taking a look at some news coming out of Philadelphia as the Philadelphia Flyers have made some coaching changes. So we'll be going over that today. So the Van... I just made a video on the Vancouver Canucks. The Philadelphia ooh, Flyers, ooh. we're talking about the Flyers today, have let go of head coach Alain Vigneault as well as Michel Therrien. Um, these are two pretty interesting guys in the hockey world. They've been around for a while. Vino has been a coach that's kind of gone everywhere. He was with the Vancouver Canucks for a while. He was with the Rangers for a while. So he's been around the block as well as Terrian. Terrian was the head coach of the Montreal Canadiens. He has a past, uh, in wilkes Bar with the wilkes Bar Scranton Penguins of the AHL. So He's definitely had his time in, in the league, and they definitely are pretty well-known coaches. Uh, but they have been let go by the Flyers. The Flyers are currently on a nine-game losing skid, and this team just looks deflated. And you, you look at some of the recent games the past really week and a half now, um, they have not had a good schedule. Uh, that has not helped the Flyers in any sense. But there's no room for excuses. This is the NHL, and unfortunately, heads had to roll. And this is how things kind of played out in Philadelphia. So the Flyers right now, they bring in Mike Yeo, an interim head coach tag. We kind of saw that similar situation with the Vancouver Canucks and Bruce Boudreaux. Uh, but what's interesting here is you're probably thinking, who's Mike Yeo? I've, I've heard that name before. Well, he actually knows Chuck Fletcher. Now, if you guys remember back in the day, Chuck Fletcher was the general manager of the Minnesota Wild. Obviously had some falling outs. Uh, he brought in, or I, I don't know for certain if he brought him in, but he was there when Mike Yeo came into Minnesota. Um, so they have that connection there. So I wasn't that surprised when I heard it was Mike Yeo. Um He's a guy that's kind of bounced around as well. He was with, like I said, he was with the Minnesota Wild for a little bit. Then he was an assistant with the St. Louis Blues under Craig Berube. Won a Stanley Cup, I'm pretty sure. So he's definitely had his time in the league. Um, but this is a tough spot for Mike Yeo. Now, the reason I say that is this is an organization here with the Flyers that they demand success. And I I think, unfortunately, this is a team with, despite all the moves they made this summer, they traded their first-round pick for Rasmus Ristolainen. They bring in um, Ryan Ellis. They bring in these guys, but unfortunately, they haven't been able to get the right guy behind the bench. Now, again, that's the thing. Maybe you're, this is going to be the real test, and that's what the Flyers are thinking here. And This is could end up being the end of Chuck Fletcher's time in Philadelphia at the end of the season. Is did Chuck Fletcher get the right players and the coaching staff wasn't up to par? We'll probably find that out here with Yeo. Or is Chuck Fletcher, the general manager, not bringing in the right players that fit the culture, that fit what the Flyers are trying to do? And then it kind of falls back on Fletcher because the coaches don't stand a chance if the scouting on these players isn't good that they're bringing in and Ristolainen isn't as good as we all thought he was and this and that so I think this is an interesting spot right now for the Flyers to really figure out what they are and you look at where they're at right now it's going to be a rough hill to climb here for Yeo and this staff they are 19 points back of the last wild card spot in the Eastern Conference and that's currently held by the Detroit Red Wings so 19 points that's no joke that is a there is a big gap there that's what is that? That's nine and a half games back. If you're talking about baseball, baseball terms of things, nine and a half points back. That's hold on. They're nine points back. I don't know why 19 is there. So they're nine points back. So that is a lot more attainable than 19 points back. I was going to say it's pretty early in the year to be 19 points back, but um, yeah, the Islanders are getting pretty close. They're they're almost 30 back in Detroit, so at least you're not the Islanders, Flyers fans, just just barely. Uh, but the Flyers, this has been a, a season where we were expecting the Flyers to be in the conversation for a playoff team. I remember in my preseason predictions, I had Carolina, the Islanders, and I fucked up, the Flyers. Those were my top three teams in the Metro Division. And then I kind of had a 
you know, kind of an arms man's race between the Rangers and Washington and who else was there? Maybe New Jersey. But Columbus has been better than we thought. Pittsburgh's been better than I thought. So it's kind of created this spot where the Flyers just, their division has gotten better. And I don't think they've necessarily gotten better better and I think that's that's tough news to hear when you gave up the draft picks you did this summer you traded out Nolan Patrick like a lot happened for the Flyers this past summer and Chuck Fletcher's moves here I think this is kind of the writing on the wall I just unless they go on this crazy turnaround I don't see the Flyers sticking around with Chuck Fletcher here because this is just not really where the Flyers need to be at least you know under the old regime with um, with Ron Hextall, the you know, obviously the famous uh, goalie there, uh, this was a team that at least got in the playoffs every year and then got got beat up by the Rangers or the the Capitals or the Penguins. But at least they were getting into the playoffs. The Flyers aren't even doing that anymore. This is a team that just middle of the road and maybe even less than that at this point. And when you go on a nine game losing streak, especially in the Eastern Conference. Specifically in the Metropolitan Division, there is no room for that that kind of losing streak. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. What do you think of the Philadelphia Flyers moving forward? Because this is a team that just, I'm, I'm quite concerned right now if I'm a Flyers fan as to how the rest of this season goes. I don't see the optimism. And maybe we look back at this video in March and we say they end up being a top three team in the Metro. You know, a couple of these teams that are further up, it's still early in the season. They get some injuries and they start falling off or they're inexperienced and the Flyers come back in. Because that's the thing with the Flyers that's so frustrating is you look at them. I mean, you look at some of the guys on this team, veteran guys on this team, Claude Giroux, James Van Riemsdyk, Kevin Hayes, Sean Couturier, and that's just forwards. I'm not even talking about defensemen yet. You know, Ryan Ellis, Ivan Provorov, you know, you have the players there. It's just they can't seem to put it together. And at the end of the day, I, I do question if this comes down to goaltending because that has been a problem since Hextall was here. Everybody said Ron Hextall is the goalie whisperer, and it drives it drives me nuts when I hear people say, oh, so because that guy was that in that position – he should be really good at finding that type of player. That's not the case. The Islanders had the same problem with Garth Snow. He was a former goalie. He couldn't find a goalie for his life, even drafting first overall. So, at the end of the day, you know, it's just, it's, I don't know what you do. I think this is the right move for the Flyers because we've seen this team do pretty well. I look back to the 2020 playoff bubble, you know, you look back at what could have been. Had we not had the pandemic, in 2020, I remember, if you guys go back in, in the archives of my videos, there's definitely a video where I made my predictions for the Stanley Cup playoffs in 2020. And I'm almost certain that the Philadelphia Flyers were my team to win the Stanley Cup in 2020. And obviously, you look how things have kind of shaked out since then. Tampa's pretty happy. They've won back-to-back -back Cups. But for all we know, the Philadelphia Flyers may have won a cup in 2020 and completely changed the landscape of the NHL. Tampa might have blown everything up. They may not have won any cups. So you just look at how that season probably is so frustrating for Flyers fans. I Honestly, I, I, you know, my Flyers fans out there, I love you guys, but I really I hate you guys as well. I, I'm, I'm not a big Philly guy, uh, and you guys definitely let me know that in the comments section. So... I'll just beat you to the punch right now. Um, so, my prediction, do the Flyers get in the playoffs in 2020? What are we now? 2030 at this point? I don't know. I'm, I, I'm losing track. 2022, do they make the playoffs? No. I don't think they make the playoffs. And I wonder if there's going to be, depending on if they get a new general manager next summer, you know, this is going to be really interesting how this plays out. And I wouldn't be surprised if they start trying to move out those big salaries. But the problem is, can you move out a James Van Reems like Claude Giroux, final year of his deal. How does that play out? You just signed Couturier. Are you able to move on from Couturier even if you wanted to? I don't know if that's necessarily on the table. But these are the kind of things that they are going to look at. 
Uh, but yes, I don't see them making the playoffs. So let me know what you guys think down below. And if you like what we're doing here at Goal Line Hockey, want to see the latest news around the NHL and more videos just like this one, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and an even bigger subscribe down below. Guys, thank you so much, and I will see you again next time.